I'm Manuele Barbieri and I work in the research and development group of RINA Consulting. Today, I'm going to present to you a time project uh, webinar. And in particular, we are going to talk about uptime innovative solution focus on aviation business case also thanks to the participation of fft so we are going to show uptime implementation in fft business case and the lesson learned and best practice to approach a pdm project at the end of the webinar there will be a 20 minute question and answer session so as you can see you have uh, um, uh, go to webinar panel that include a question section you can use the question section to make question and at the end of the webinar during the question and answer session i will read the question so that a time expert can answer to your doubt and curiosity about the project today we have three main speakers I'd like to thank Mr. Versteg, Mr. Buzdekis, and Mr. von Stettenkron to be here with us today to talk about our project. I'd like to introduce a little bit then to all of you. Jeroen Versteg has a Master Mechanical Engineering degree from Twente University with a specialization in industrial automation. For FFT, he has contributed to projects such as building uh, Airbus A320 assembly line in Tianjin, China, and Comac C919 keeping line in Shanghai, China, the latter as FFT China Head of Aviation Department. Jerome strives to enable people to work smarter, not harder, by implementing innovative processes and novel software integration to increase quality and productivity. The presentation is delivered by Jerome Versteg, who currently manages FFT contribution to Uptime, which used the Uptime platform to predict the state of mobile transportation jig used to transport wing skins for Europe's largest aircraft OEM by land, sea, and air, and the co-development of generic mobile IoT sensor platform, Uptime Sense Node, used and tested in this deployment. Alexandros Buzdekis is a senior researcher at the Information Management Unit of the Institute of Communication and Computer System. Since 2014, he has been working in several factory of the future and ICT R&D projects. His research interests include Industry 4.0, Intelligent System, Management of Information System, Predictive and Prescriptive Analytics, real-time decision-making and proactive computing. He is also an adjunct lecturer at the Department of Informatics and Computer Engineering of the University of West Attica. Moritz von Stientekron is a research scientist in the Department for Intelligent ICT for the Cooperative Production at BIBA, with a background in industrial engineering and management. His main expertise is the item level, closed loop, product lifecycle management. In the IC funded project BOMA, Fortissimo, IC, Man Intelligence, Lincoln, and Uptime, he co developed and implemented a soft and hardware concept for the universal sensor gateway to enable the integration of product into the Internet of Things and their digital twin. He is one of the founding members of the IoT Fab Lab at BIBA and currently technical coordinator of the EU project uh, Digital Innovation Hub for Cyber Physical System. So thank you to be, to be here with us. Now I leave the floor to Mr. Alexandros Buzdekis, who will introduce the uptime solution. Thank you very much again and welcome to our webinar. Okay, so uh, good morning. I suppose you can hear me uh, clear and you can uh, see uh, the presentation. So I'm going to uh, introduce, introduce you uh, to uh, the uptime solution and uh, later on we uh, will be able to see uh, more details about uh, its implementation in, um, uh, in the FFT use case. Uh, so, just as an introduction, the Uptime project 
uh, is a project uh, funded in the context of the uh, FOF 9 uh, 2017 about novel design and predictive maintenance technologies for increased operating life uh, of production systems. Um, this is a, a, a project uh, uh, which is implemented by a consortium consisting of two research institutes, uh, Biba from Germany, which is also the project coordinator, and uh, ICCS from Greece. Uh, these two uh, from uh, four uh, technology providers, uh, RINA, Ubitech, Suite 5, and uh, Pumacy. Um, there are three use cases, and this is the third webinar um, which will present the FFT uh, use case and two consulting companies uh, from France. So the uptime vision is to reframe predictive maintenance strategy in a systematic way in order to um, achieve uh, operational intelligence and to uh, minimize the, uh, the maintenance uh, costs. So to do this, uh, uptime uh, exploits research and technological advances in three domains. The first domain is Industry 4.0. So currently, with the emerging paradigm of Industry 4.0, um, the, there are the capabilities of using, uh, um, of using physical and virtual sensors that generate huge amounts of data. So um, the manufacturing operations um, can further be enabled and uh, adapt their behavior according to the current and the predicted conditions. The second advancement is big data processing, uh, which enables the development of data-driven and real-time systems uh, incorporating efficient processing technologies and algorithms. So in this way, we can um, analyze data in real time and take uh, reliable decisions uh, even ahead of time. And proactive computing, uh, which has to do with the use of information systems for eliminating or mitigating future undesired events or for taking advantage of future opportunities. In other words, how to, um, to, to act upon a predicted future failure, for example, in the context of predictive maintenance, uh, so that uh, we are able to mitigate um, its uh, impact or even to, to avoid uh, the failure. So uh, these uh, three pillars, I would say, uh, forms the, form the basis uh, for the uptime approach and uh, extending uh, this uh, con convergence of these uh, three pillars, uh, we have developed uh, our approach uh, that uh, was um, embedded in a respective uh, platform, in the uptime platform. So um, first, uh, we, in our approach, we take into account uh, the theoretical background of predictive maintenance with the signal processing, diagnosis, prognosis, and decision-making uh, capabilities. We are also taking into, into account the proactive computing framework with the, the phases of detect, predict, decide, and act. Um, we are also taking into account the industrial data analytics maturity uh, according to the phases of monitoring, diagnosing and controlling, managing and optimizing. And um, in the development of the uptime solution, um, we, are ta we take into account several uh, standards, uh, either uh, technological or more uh, high level standards, uh, but the main, um, uh, the main standard that uh, uh, forms the basis uh, for this development is the Mimosa OSA CBM uh, with the, uh, the associated uh, phases. So based on this, based on this convergence, uh, we uh, develop a unified predictive maintenance system which consists of uh, uh, several uh, phases that uh, I'm going to um, describe in uh, a little mo more detailed uh, in, uh, in the context of the uptime conceptual architecture. So uh, in this slide, you can see a, a high level view of the uptime architecture. Obviously, uh, there are several challenges at all levels of architecture from uh, uh, the lowest level and the technical uh, aspects that need, that need to be addressed uh, up to the conceptual level. But at this stage, uh, I'm going to introduce you uh, to some um, um, to some um, 
functionalities of the uptime uh, architecture. Uh, so as you can see, uh, there are several phases that uh, come together and uh, constitute the unified predictive maintenance framework and the, uh, the unified predictive maintenance platform. First, uh, there is the uptime sense phase, which serves as a modular data acquisition and integration device framework for gathering the sensor generated data in real time. Uh, the uptime detect, which aims at detecting the current health state of the uh, manufacturing system under consideration. The uptime predict phase, which predicts the future health state and uh, the upcoming failure modes. Uh, the detect and predict phases are obviously very closely connected, uh, so um, they are separated here from a conceptual point of view. The decide phase, which proactively recommends maintenance actions and plans. The visualize phase, which aggregates, analyzes and visualizes the data and provides um, meaningful uh, dashboards and uh, graphs uh, for uh, facilitating decision making uh, from the user. Uh, the FMECA uh, phase, which models failure modes, effects and criticalities based on the data and this uh, actually um, is a, a central part for developing the uptime data model uh, that um, uh, co that communicates with all the, the with all the other phases and the analyzed component which has to do uh, with the integration and analysis of historical data that are stored in legacy systems so, so um, uh, data that have to do uh, with the um, operational uh, or enterprise uh, um, data and uh, uh, information. So, uh, as I said, later on you uh, will be able to, to see the, a walkthrough of the uptime platform in the context of the FFT uh, use case. Uh, here you can just see um, an overview of some screens uh, that um, the user is able to see. Uh, for example, the user is able to see an overview of maintenance activities and issues uh, over a time frame. Uh, the user is also able to see um, the asset health uh, and uh, the outcomes of the legacy and operational data analytics. Uh, in real time, the user can see uh, anomalies detection and uh, failure predictions um, regarding the asset under consideration. And based on this uh, real-time uh, diagnostic and prognostic information, the user is able to um, is, a, is able to see maintenance recommendations. That is recommendations about maintenance actions, and upon user approval, they can be uh, inserted in the maintenance plan uh, that uh, will be followed. So, in um, in uh, you. You, are, you can uh, have access to the you can have access to the recording of the previous uh, webinars. Uh, the one webinar was about um, the whirlpool use case uh, that is uh, from the uh, white goods production uh, industry. Uh, the other webinar is about uh, the second use case, uh, Miles Group from Greece, uh, which belongs to uh, the sector of uh, steel industry. And uh, we are going to present in this webinar the FFT use case, that is uh, construction of production systems, jigs and fixtures. And um, uh, we are talking about uh, transportation jigs in, uh, uh, in the aerospace uh, industry. So these are the three use cases of, uh, um, of, the, uptime, uh, uh, of the uptime project. And um, the aim uh, is to achieve the uh, the impact that we have uh, we had planned uh, at the very beginning, and since the project uh, is currently um, reaching its end, uh, we are very close to it. Uh, so the expected impact is uh, an improvement on uh, overall equipment uh, efficiency, uh, on mean time till repair, uh, improvements regarding the mean time between failures the total cost of maintenance and uh, the component life um, extension. So uh, these percentages are uh, very important from the use cases of the project, but 
generally uh, for uh, several uh, manufacturing sectors since uh, such percentages um, have the potential to uh, to, to be linked uh, to very important um, uh, improvements uh, in terms of cost, of time, of uh, uh, reliable operations, uh, etc. So this was uh, an introduction uh, by uh, by me regarding uh, the overall uh, uh, uptime solution and. Uh, uh, now you will be able to uh, dive into more details uh, regarding the FFT use case. Thank you, Alexandros. Uh, thank you, Manuela, also for the for the opportunity, of course. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, I trust you can see my screen, hear me correctly, and see me also. Um, so I will, as uh, Alexandros introduced, already introduce a bit more about the FFT use case. Um, the, F the role of FFT in the uptime platform is um, mainly to provide, on one hand, uh, the requirements, part of the requirements, uh, so that uh, the uptime project uh, knows what the requirements of uh, certain industries are. And uh, that was used, obviously, to uh, fill in the functionality of the architecture and of the modules in the platform. Uh, and on the other hand, of course, we uh, provide uh, technical input and also uh, the platform on which uh, the uptime platform was uh, piloted, one of the three platforms as you have seen. Um, FFT in a nutshell, um, FFT is a, is a company uh, about uh, 3,000 uh, employees uh, and uh, uh, it has his main uh, his main activities in the the making of complete assembly line for for industry. So it's automotive uh, assembly lines, turnkey body shops, uh, also related automation technology on one hand. And a smaller part, uh, smaller division is the aviation uh, division, which does uh, also production lines, uh, so aircraft production lines, uh, such as the one in uh, Tianjin. For Airbus and the one in Shanghai for uh, Comac, um, but also uh, systems and test operations. And um, uh, the thing that is most related to uh, to the uptime project is our maintenance um, uh, activity, which is uh, mostly maintenance uh, under contract, maintenance as a service. So that means that we uh, perform maintenance uh, for companies uh, as a project, uh, not necessarily on our own equipment, uh, but in this case, uh, actually, it is also our, uh, the, the equipment we sold to, to the customer. So this is uh, twofold. Um, the use case we have chosen for the uptime project um, is, uh, is this, uh, what we see here. Um, it is uh, a big, transport jig, uh, very big, 40 meters long, uh, which is used um, in the aircraft industry to transport wing panels and wing skins uh, between the production sites. Um, and the requirements are uh, very high on this. Uh, we, uh, we both uh, produced this, uh, designed and uh, manufactured these jigs. Uh, there are, I believe, eight uh, in operation currently of, of this type. Um, and uh, we also do the maintenance project for this. Um, the maintenance of these ashes, assets is very uh, difficult and also highly crucial because uh, of the transport worthiness. And especially, as, as we all know, airworthiness is a very uh, important topic uh, because uh, it is highly safety relevant, even more so than road transport and uh, uh, sea transport or transport over water. Um, another thing which is also typical for our use case, uh, because it is maintenance as a service, is that there's a very high coordination overhead, um, because this is a, a subcontracted project where we have to report to the customer also the performance of the maintenance uh, in a way that uh, he can handle. So that is uh, also different from some other use cases. Um, why is the is this uh, a good case for us to to try to optimize? Because it's highly challenging. 
Um, there's on one hand, uh, we need uh, to ensure a very high operational reliability, and this is a really high effort because it's a complex jig, um, which has to be airworthy, and uh, it is also sensitive to uh, to uh, a lot of environmental factors uh, because it's so complex. Um, there's a unknown acid condition uh, because uh, the the acid is usually in transit when it's operating. It's uh, it's in an airplane, it's on a ship, it's in a truck, um, and it arrives on a remote site where you don't have eyes and ears normally. Uh, so you don't know what what is the status of your acid, and uh, the obviously the availability requirements are very high because you have to uh, when a jig arrives at the location where you want to perform the maintenance. It is also in transit, so it arrives with a payload. The payload is taken out, uh, and uh, and it has to turn over uh, once again. So it has to uh, be loaded with something else, or sent back empty and loaded with with a new payload. So uh, uh, so this is all cost if there would be a delay, and also uh, hampering production if if there would be issues. Um, it's difficult to identify mishandling, uh, same as the second uh, part I mentioned because you don't know what happens to the jig uh, when it's far away. Um, and last but not least, uh, a difficult issue is that uh, things that happen to the jig, uh, the behavior of the jig, uh, you don't normally get a direct feedback to the people who designed the jig uh, in order to enable improvements of the jig, um, uh, in order to make it less sensitive to uh, certain uh, en environmental factors or other factors, for example. Um, what are typical failures we see? Um, uh, mostly uh, structural failure uh, we see, uh, both by environmental factors uh, and uh, uh, yeah, dynamic stresses, it's also environmental, um, or also collisions which are uh, man-made, so to say. So some, somebody with a forklift uh, truck running into the jig and damaging something and maybe not telling about it or not really noticing it. That's that's a typical failure that happens uh, often. Of course, corrosion and aging, we have to, um, to see that the jig uh, spends a lot of time outside, parked outside is big, uh, and in transit on a ship, uh, in a truck, uh, in the aircraft, it's covered, uh, obviously, but it has uh, large temperature differences. So this all, this all contributes to this kind of failure and uh, lost parts uh, so it's all the time in transit if something is not attached properly or people uh, use a tool which is a part of the jig but don't attach it back properly you you, you get lost parts typical causes of these as i mentioned are uh, dynamic loading uh, environmental stress temperature especially and user error so this is uh, this is uh, all these things they, they happen usually in a way which we cannot directly see. Um, what was the status quo of the maintenance project before we joined uh, the uptime project, or at the time we uh, joined the uptime project? Um, we basically had uh, a, a, yeah a traditional workflow for the maintenance, uh, meaning you have a checklist, you have a result list. You write reports uh, and you uh, do preventive maintenance, planned maintenance for, for periodical uh, uh, validity checks uh, and uh, certification checks um, and uh, corrective maintenance. Um, there is, uh, of course, a high uh, dependency uh, on the customer for uh, to produce these. Um, oh, sorry. Um, to to uh, perform these processes. Um, so we have uh, highly high flexibility requirements. A customer says uh, you need to do something, and he gives you new information. You have to act on it. Um, there, of, obviously, is a high manual effort for asset identification uh, because the asset is uh, a, a new uh, an asset comes. You can see the you can see the label on it. Uh, you have to uh, get uh, your reports you had before of this asset. And you you all have to do this work manually. You all have you, uh, you your archives of information and so on. So uh, this is very difficult, and you also have to report it. It's a lot of manual work. 
um, as I mentioned, unknown condition and location uh, is a very unknown. You just know uh, when you ask about it that it arrives on a certain site or when it comes back and when you have to uh, stand ready to, to do your maintenance. And again, no, no feedback to the maintenance uh, team, uh, to the design team. So, and uh, what I didn't mention very clearly, but what is a very significant um, topic in our case is that uh, we perform the maintenance uh, in the um, factory, uh, in the plant of the customer. Uh, and it's uh, typically not directly next to our door. It's, uh, in this case, it's uh, the factory in which maintenance is performed and where the jigs are loaded is in Stade, which is uh, from Bremen, where the maintenance team is, uh, is situated. It's uh, more than an hour drive as well. So you have to uh, do a lot of planning. Um, to do it right. Um, KPIs and enablers. Uh, I won't go into detail about this uh, into this because it's uh, everybody has the same KPIs basically. It's uh, on time delivery, on quality delivery, and on cost delivery, and everything related to that. Uh, Alexandros has already mentioned uh, in the overview. Uh, but what is important for us? It's uh, what are the enablers in our case. Uh, for these mobile assets to uh, to improve these KPIs, um, and that is uh, what we first set out, of course, uh, to uh, to make a list uh, of the requirements uh, we expect from uptime uh, to deliver on, and uh, that is uh, of course flexible process planning and integration. So you have basically a platform that can assist you in uh, in doing these maintenance activities in a more automated way. Um, uh, for that, you need a continuous information management uh, so that you uh, always know uh, what the state of your asset is and that you also, uh, always also have the possibility to have on-demand access to this information. Um, and uh, you need, uh, you can thereby um, make a continuous improvement happen. So uh, you can uh, have a better overview uh, for one jig, for many jigs, uh, for the whole fleet of uh, specific jigs, and uh, therefore you can indicate weak processes, propose improvements, or also on one jig, indicate weak areas. Uh, it's, uh, it, when the weather is bad, uh, you identify that some error occurs more often than when the weather is good. It gives you a lot of insight uh, in how you can uh, can reduce the sensitivity of the of the asset. Um, so that led us to post these requirements for the uptime uh, platform. Um, so uh, basically to define what, what we expect the uptime platform to offer us uh, to, to work uh, better. Uh, and that is uh, we need data aggregation, uh, post-processing and storage uh, integrated. Um, basically a complete data evaluation and management platform. Um, comprehensive maintenance process management, uh, access by different stakeholders, uh, especially for us, because we want to be able to, to let the customer know the status about his uh, assets and our performance uh, without uh, actively, actively uh, having to do reporting. That is a very significant point. Um, and um, we need open interfaces uh, enabled to extend uh, the platform and connect it easier to other uh, data stores. Um, and what we wanted to have is a physical asset data acquisition platform, basically a kind of IoT uh, idea where you uh, where you have it easy to uh, to to assess the state of your mobile equipment in a robust and easy manner and that is uh, what we uh, we imagined we could uh, use uh, in uptime and that had to be added to uptime so this has to offer a modularity scalability mobility and it's also importantly has to be certifiable certifiable for in flight operation so that led us uh, from our side to to this kind of vision for uh, for the requirements for uptime what what should for us uptime look like. Um, you can see here on the on the left, you can see the uh, data acquisition platform we imagined, which is uh, basically a kind of IoT uh, arrangement where you have many mobile sensor modules uh, and a semi-mobile hub, which is in our case 
called uh, the gateway. Uh, and you have a, a manual, manual introduction of uh, data in the in the platform. And uh, the, the big blue uh, blob here is the platform itself, uh, which would obviously uh, address topics like storage and the whole data handling, which you can see here. It's the, the whole uh, data handling and uh, reporting cycle and the prediction cycle and everything you, you want to do with the data. So this is our imagination of the of the uptime platform, which is in effect a maintenance management platform in that case. And then uh, also very important and also um, a bit more specific for our use case is uh, what you see here on the right, the client interfaces, uh, meaning that we want to have uh, a, a large uh, group of different stakeholders um, who can all access in some way uh, in a customized way, the data that is in the platform. Um, and the reason for that is, as I already mentioned, that we can uh, have different access for customers who want to see the state of the project and the state of our performance uh, and the state of their own assets, which we uh, maintain. Um, a design team, for example, who can uh, analyze trends, uh, what happens to assets and uh, how that might lead to design improvements planning team um, to see where is the jig, when does it arrive, how damaged is it, uh, how, how should we and when should we dispatch our uh, maintenance team and so on. So this is all, uh, all very important for our application of use case, of this use case. So what did we do for the, uh, for the first part, the data acquisition platform? Um, uh, we contributed uh, to the project by uh, developing uh, in-house because there wasn't really something we uh, we could use uh, on the market uh, uh, which which ticks all the boxes basically uh, and for us that means it it has to be simple, robust, mobile, small, uh, energy efficient, uh, and uh, but also has a significant set of features which are usually uh, if, if these boxes are ticked uh, the the tick the boxes of the more features are usually not ticked in our case for example an interface to connect strain gauges to that you can also do stress measurements uh, with this uh, uh, with this uh, sense node so we developed uh, that for that the sense node and Biba developed for that um, Further, the sense, uh, the sensor gateway, um, which is called SenseCore in the Uptime project, and together they cover uh, the this IoT solution I managed, uh, I mentioned uh, for the data acquisition uh, platform in our case, and this relates to the whole Uptime platform uh, as you see in the small picture uh, by basically filling uh, filling in the functionality of the uh, sense part Uptime Sense. Um, so how you, you have already roughly seen a similar picture in Alexandra's presentation, meaning it presents the components of the uptime platform, um, what components are in there. Uh, you can see here the, the quality of the components, the, the, the role of the components basically, and inside are, are components or subcomponents uh, that do the job. And uh, here you can see you know, uh, how FFT's use case uh, uses uh, the different components uh, of the uptime platform. Uh, you can see this uh, later to study in more detail if you want. Uh, the presentation will be uh, shared and it, it is recorded so you can uh, go into this more detail if you want to. Um, the data acquisition in, in, the, in the real uh, application is like this. Uh, so uh, on the left you can see what exactly does our sense node record on the jig. And um, uh, in, at the place of the yellow circles, uh, this is the uh, location where the, where the uh, sensor nodes are connected, um, are placed. And the nice thing about the sensor node is that was also what we needed from it, is that you have a really independent sensor node which you can just slap on any kind of equipment, uh, not only this jig, um, and that will basically start recording data and, and sending data, so that you have it very easily uh, and a very easy way to instrument your uh, your subject of um, of measurement. Um, then you um, 
uh, we have this uh, in a pilot case we have uh, we have tested this but the difficulty is because we don't own the assets and they have to go in flight transport uh, during the development cycle and also because of the corona situation uh, we didn't have uh, let's say an unlimited playground and because of that um, we also made um, a small jig uh, together with Biba, uh, which um, uh, represents some of the behavior of this big jig. Um, and this is something which we use for the data acquisition. Uh, we will now see in, in Moritz's presentation where he will go into more detail about the, uh, how uh, the uptime platform actually processes our data and how we can use this data to um, improve our processes. So now I would like to give the floor to uh, Moritz for that. Thank you very much for your attention. As Jeroen mentioned uh, earlier, we um, we have recreated, uh, um, or we, we had to find a way around uh, the limited availability of the jig. And uh, what you can see here in, in our tour of the Biba demonstration lab is that we created um, actually a small section of, um, of this jig. Um, which uh, was also uh, marked uh, in, in Jorn's presentation earlier, um, which represents um, one of the um, uh, most interesting sections of the jig. So this is now two uh, meters long only, um, but this allows us um, to mount it in, uh, in one of our trucks and actually take it for quite a number of um, uh, of transport cycles, um, which we can then uh, also simulate rather easily uh, again. So that's what uh, what we did for the setup of the system and um, for calibrating um, the first set of algorithms here as well. So we have um, one measurement unit here mounted to the to the truck itself as a reference point, and we have one measurement unit uh, mounted to the um, uh, to the tip of this aluminium structure here. And um, now jumping to our uptime platform, as it was introduced by Alexandros uh, already, um, we are here in the stream data analytics part, and we can now see, uh, in, in the first glance, we can see the raw sensor data which is coming in, and we can also see the uh, location of the asset um, as it is being um, transported uh, on, a, on a loop cycle um, here. Um, and of course, now um, from from this point, we can't uh, make too much of these uh, data other than that we see maybe, okay, when we're going around the corner here, um, we're having higher spikes in the accelerations, but that doesn't give us, um, of course, any any significant flexibility or, um, or output directly. So the first thing that um, we did uh, was use the uptime detect um, platform, which um, has two different algorithms running at the moment. One, which we can see the output on the right here, is a very simple um, algorithm detecting the time in use um, to allow us to assess the actual wear um, during normal operation of the asset. And the other one is um, on the left-hand side is an outlier detection, which uh, detects um, different events along the transport cycle, which differ from the normal operation. Um, so here we can already see that we have some spikes and some, um, uh, uh, some higher spikes than others. And if we go back to the, uh, to the sensor data and activate this uh, here as well, we can also see that this actually matches quite nicely with, um, uh, with those parts which we uh, identified earlier uh, by chance. We can also have a look uh, uh, more in detail into the data, of course, and can see that it is in fact uh, the, the bends going on the highway in this case, which uh, creates significant um, stress or acceleration and thus stress for the structure. And uh, similar spikes can of course be observed, for example, uh, with the example Jeroen has mentioned um, of mishandling um, or a smaller accident, for example, with the forklift truck. From these two uh, um, 
different uh, sort of activity and usage detections. Um, we, we feed this data into the predict module, which is a sister component of the detect um, component. And that takes uh, this data to create a probability distribution function for uh, the need of maintenance um, over the next, in this demo case, 10 minutes. Um, and this function is then uh, passed on to uh, onto the further components uh, of the platform. Um, but uh, we will not go into, into too much detail of that at the moment. So this is uh, just a very quick um, view into the uh, um, uh, into the sensor data setup, um, which we used in the uh, in, in the uptime implementation of the FFT uh, business case, and uh, with that, I will hand back to Jeroen um, for a wrap up of uh, how this has paid out for FFT. Thank you, Moritz. Um... Yes, uh, so in, indeed, uh, now, now of course, everybody is interested in, uh, so uh, this, is, this all looks nice and flashy, but uh, uh, where are the benefits, right? So, so I will try to say something about that. Um, uh, we have to recall that uh, two things that, uh, that we are not yet uh, completely, we haven't been able to do a complete long-term deployment in operation. Uh, for reasons mentioned uh, before, um, so uh, so that is why uh, I will present here more or less like a, a projection about uh, a, a, what what could be the benefit uh, if we deploy it on scale this uh, this platform. Um, we have to recall that uh, FFT's uh, use case has a few special features which are not present in uh, in many other use cases in similar projects which is that it's uh, for us in, uh, it covers maintenance as a surface uh, so it's uh, an important part is uh, our quality of service service towards the customer and increasing that by using the platform um, and that we have mobile and diverse assets obviously in the in the use case we have one type of asset but it's highly complex but uh, in, a, in a real deployment, you would have many different kinds of transport jigs, uh, which uh, all are part of the fleet of assets. And uh, this is a dynamic scope, so it can also change. So this is something that uptime uh, has to deliver and uh, for which you also need a, a good data handling platform. Um, and something which is also specific to our case is that we have uh, additional layers of end user uh, type stakeholders, meaning uh, that uh, in, in maybe in a normal factory, the end user is, uh, the, uh, is the operator and the maintenance team and maybe a manager as a stakeholder as well. Um, but for us, it is obviously uh, these internally plus the same externally, uh, uh, meaning the customer. So the customer is the owner of the assets and the operator of the assets. And we are merely the maintainer of the assets, and in this case, also the the, the uh, conceiver and the, the builder of the assets. So there are many different types of stakeholders who, who all uh, need to have access to to some of the data in the platform. Um, so how how can we uh, analyze the the benefits? Uh, basically, to uh, by seeing how the main requirements are covered by the uh, uptime uh, platform. What are our main types of focus, uh, points of focus? They are uh, the maintenance planning, the maintenance execution, the reporting and the uh, uh, improvement or the M an enabler for continuous improvement of product and processes. So uh, for FFT, this means that we have, um, uh, we have, um, become or we, we think we will become by full deployment of uptime much more uh, efficient and the the number is is an estimate as i mentioned 15 to 25 percent should be possible and this was uh, exemplary calculated from uh, analyzing how uh, how our team is deployed now based on the information they have now and how uh, they could be deployed if we would have uh, more information about uh, the assets uh, at any time. 
This will lead typically to much less waiting times, less material waste, uh, because you already know what you are going to do before you go on site, uh, get in your car, go on site, uh, take your materials and so on, and uh, do the job. Uh, much better planning of, better, uh, of external resources. Uh, suppose you need a welder to repair something and you don't have a welder in your team. Currently, you have to, uh, to find one. And uh, if you know uh, in advance that you will need him, it, it is obviously much better and will save a lot of costs as well. Um, less reporting effort, as I mentioned, uh, data on demand, also for the, uh, for the customer stakeholders uh, will lead to that. And all in all, a more satisfied customer, uh, which customer doesn't, doesn't want a nice dashboard, uh, which he didn't have before, and, um, uh, and take a look at uh, what is the status of the project, of his assets, uh, tell his boss about it uh, more easily, do, uh, no reporting overhead for him as well. It is uh, a lot of um, advantages we have there. Um, so all these points, they uh, will typically represent significant cost savings, uh, both for the people executing uh, the project, uh, the maintenance as a service project, and also for the customer, um, meaning it's also more attractive for him to, uh, to pay us further to, do, uh, to extend the project, for example, the service project. Um, so this is all in terms of cost saving. Um, uh, everybody is uh, usually as well uh, wondering about uh, return on investment. Uh, so what about the investment? Uh, it's currently difficult to say. You know you, uh, you need to deploy the uptime platform. You know you need to do training uh, and so on. Um, but with some conservative rough estimates, uh, depending on what the price tag of, of the deployment of uptime will be, uh, later on, uh, it, it should be not diff not too difficult to to earn back uh, to get break even on such a project in in a relatively short time, one to one and a half years. Um, and uh, it also depends, of course, on the size of the maintenance team or the people directly affected uh, by it. And obviously, if you can, with the same deployment, uh, tackle a bigger project, uh, you will have uh, percentually better cost savings as well. Um, something about uh, the end user assessment and the feedback. Uh, we uh, represent part of the end users as, as the people deploying uh, uh, the uptime platform. And it's still, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a little bit in a protected environment. It means we, we didn't expose large maintenance teams uh, uh, yet to this solution. But uh, so we also have to project a bit here. But uh, the, the general opinion is that uh, the platform has a very intuitive web interface and really puts data at your fingertips, which is, which is key for, uh, for such a case uh, where, where you do data processing. You, you, you do a lot of effort to do data acquisition. Uh, you also need to do something useful with it. Um, the configurability and customization within the platform uh, uh, can still be improved, but it's uh, normal for the current state of the project, I would say. And typically, I uh, will get back to that later, it is also something you would uh, focus on for a specific deployment, that you can uh, make it happen quite fast and really make it uh, powerful to be used by domain experts, for example. Um, uptime sense, uh, you, you have seen the gateway and the sense node, um, uh, so sense core and sense node. Um, this is already, uh, I think, developed into a highly versatile uh, product concept and it's, it's, it's really a, a good prototype already. Um, and uh, this paradigm supports instrumentation on the fly. This is, this is also what we expected from it and what we hoped from it and what it actually uh, delivers. So this is close to a real a product which can be used and also used on its own um, and also integrated in our future projects where you can just say uh, we we take 10 sensor nodes, we slap it on our equipment, uh, connect it to the uptime platform and start measuring and start uh, processing the data. So this is a really, uh, a really nice thing which is uh, has a quite a good level of maturity already. Um, so this brings us to the utility. Uh, 
basically this is the is the implementation of the of the concept uh, the, the the cloud picture i showed you um, where you really have on-demand health assessment of of your assets for multiple stakeholders now, as, if you recall we had the data acquisition the platform and the and then the stakeholders on the right many different client interfaces um, it delivers crucial planning input uh, so you can actually work more effectively and efficiently uh, and it enables uh, you to continuously improve your processes because you have such a good uh, overview of your uh, of, of what's happening with your assets um, so the impact for the end user is clearly that it uh, it helps you focus more on your core tasks because you have better tools uh, this is also uh, just a, a very powerful tool which uh, which you can use as an end user um, it induces less weight uh, less waste uh, waste uh, as you have seen in the cost analysis it's basically all about uh, cost saving and it, it leads you to be better able to plan uh, better uh, and work more effectively because of that um, and um, a big enabler uh, this is in the end for cost reduction and higher quality a higher quality of service but also a high quality of of the assets which are uh, assessed by this uh, platform which are in uh, in the platform and where uh, are analyzed continuously um, so um, we are now close to the project uh, close to the end of the project and um, of course we have a few lessons learned um, it's not not all rosy uh, uh, of course there are still also some challenging factors one thing that was throughout the project uh, quite challenging was that uh, we don't own the assets we don't own these transportation gigs our customer owns them although we built them um, and uh, this has proven quite challenging uh, because you uh, you cannot do whatever you want with them and they are in production so you uh, you have to both uh, adhere to production schedules uh, and uh, listen to your customer in terms of are we allowed to instrument the jig uh, no not now because there are people afraid of uh, in-flight transmission for example <laughs> and all these kind of things so uh, this is uh, this made it uh, significantly more difficult um, what we also learned, I think, uh, also as a consortium, is that early integration is important. We, I think we did a very nice job in the, 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 the consortium, did a very good job of, of managing the project. Um, uh, but maybe we could uh, still see that if we would have started earlier to also in parallel focus on integration, and uh, not necessarily less on, on implementing the components, but uh, but especially earlier uh, about the integration of the components, uh, it it would have been easier probably to to uh, to know also um, uh, how to uh, address the interface issues and the uh, and the connection issues between the components. Um, next step, uh, next steps for us uh, in and outside of the project um, will be uh, on partial deployments, mainly outside of the project. Um, where you could basically cherry pick functionality from the uptime platform and include it in future projects, in customer projects. And for these uh, cherry picked features, we would then uh, obviously uh, see that uh, there are some functionalities which uh, are only 80% ready and we need them at 100% uh, to include them in the project. So for these, we would then typically do focused improvements. And this is a very Good departing point to to start using uh, a already quite good platform and basically improving it along the way uh, while uh, while also doing projects with it. Um, so that means you would then add uptime to the toolbox uh, for service projects, um, so that you can basically say, uh, "Customer, give me the project. I will include uptime, and uh, this is a uh, this is a great benefit for both." our sites to perform this project and the same uh, about that for the turnkey projects uh, if you have to build a production line you could consider doing the same thing so um, to have uh, to have this tool uh, latently available to you uh, for us as a customer it's a it's a very nice uh, thing to have um, so that brings us to the last point uh, the relevance to the european manufacturing industries we are also european manufacturing um, industry participant 
and uh, for you it could be the same thing. So uh, you, uh, if you take uptime in your toolbox, you consider the use of uptime to include it in your turnkey projects or your surface projects. Um, uh, this is uh, our example. The other example obviously is uh, for pr production companies. Um, you can uh, already uh, early start by actually using it and, uh, and uh, tailoring it to your needs. Uh, the platform is uh, quite good and so you, can, you only have to tailor it to your needs basically um, to really make a very good use for it um, and uh, use of it. So, uh, and then you have your integrated maintenance management platform for your own factory or your own project um, at your fingertips. So this is um, what I have uh, about this. Um, I would say, uh, give it a try, <laughs> uh, read, read up on it and give it a try. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jeron, Alexandros and Moritz for your presentation. Now it's a question and answer time. Um, so you can use your question panel to ask a question. Uh, if you have some trouble, please uh, use your chat to warning. Uh, actually, we have uh, some question. Uh, there are uh, first question. There are two stream of data: sensor data and semi-structured data. Could you explain where this second data stream come from and how it is processed? Um, I yes, uh, yeah. I can. I can answer this question. Thank you, Manuela. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Uh, I think, um, as you have seen in the in the concept uh, picture, uh, one stream is delivered by the data acquisition platform, and the other is semi-structured. And on a on a picture, you could see a scanner, a barcode scanner, and uh, and, and a tablet. You could have a mobile phone. Uh, in our case, uh, currently, the there is um, maintenance software which is used uh, in combination with tablets. And this uh, this creates basically digitized checklists. So there is a database behind it, and it, uh, and it uh, provides a digital checklists. And these checklists uh, we import in the uptime platform, and from there we have um, we have then uh, the batch uh, processing component, which was not uh, not shown in this presentation, but it's. Uh, basically on par with uh, the stream data processing, we have the batch data processing and that gives you a lot of uh, analysis possibilities uh, based on semantic analysis for keywords, uh, for example, something is broken, what is broken, a certain uh, indication of a subsystem. And this information is then from semi-structured, uh, structured more by, based on this semantic analysis and counting of, um, of issues. And then uh, it's basically more quantified in that way, and then you can also use it as inputs for the uh, for the predict and detect uh, or for the predict cycle, basically. So then you are uh, able to compare uh, these uh, uh, identified failures, with, which are basically uh, identified by people during inspections. They are described in checklists, and uh, these are basically translated into events. Where you have seen, aha, uh -huh, something is broken. This is uh, an information from the field, and you can combine this um, uh, with other information, for example, accelerations or other environmental data. And uh, with a combination of these two, you can then uh, get uh, a lot of more information. Uh, what is the cause for these failures? So this is the this is the idea how we use the second stream of data. A good um, a good way to improve on that, obviously, is to integrate the the data acquisition for the semi-structured data into the uptime platform by, for example, connecting a tablet directly to the to the database and have a translation layer behind it. Um, this was actually done in the in a whirlpool case in uptime, so it's also part of the uptime project. Uh, this is something we would have to still implement, but it's already in the uptime project. So this is a, a huge opportunity as well to to include this data in your data streams. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Jeron. Um, we have another question. Um, in the pilot use case, you are using one asset type, transportation jig. 
what would be other example of asset which could benefit from your experience with the uptime project and from the uptime platform? Um, I think uh, uh, yeah, there there's two ways. Uh, if, if I may answer this question, it's also industrial, right? <laughs> so I think it's good. yes, of course. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I think uh, there are two two uh, layers where you can see this. Uh, one is obviously the the complete uh, up, uptime platform where we have already seen that uh, it's it's used with different data acquisition platforms. In the Milis case, you have uh, fixed installed sensors. In the Whirlpool case, you have uh, legacy sensors. They already have instrumented their production lines and they use this. Uh, for their uh, for their uh, uh, fixed assets, and um, in, especially for mobile assets, uh, the sky is the limit. I would say uh, you you have um, uh, anything that is mobile, and you need to get uh, uh, continuous health metrics on. You you have the option uh, through the uptime platform to uh, to instrument the jig, for example, with our sense solution or with uh, any other mobile sense solution that can stream data to the to the cloud or to your servers, and uh, you can use it uh, to to handle this data. Um, so this is uh, and this is also the reason why the streaming data and the batch data in combination is so powerful, because if you don't have a permanent online asset which is still mobile. You could still use the batch data functionality to just do uh, checks as soon as it arrives at a certain location, or as soon as it's near a uh, near uh, a connection point. For example, you don't have to transmit continuously, but you can batchwise transmit uh, time series data still, and you can process it and you can use it. So I think um, this is. Uh, this is really effective, uh, has a high potential for any mobile uh, data acquisition and data handling case. Okay, thank you very much, Jaron, for your answer. Um, we have another question. Which machine learning algorithm did you use? Um, maybe I give that one to, um, to Morris or Alexandros. Um, that is uh they, they can do go a little bit more into detail about it i think um yeah of course uh, so for the for the outlier detection of the sensor data acceleration data we used a, a microcluster outlier detection algorithm uh, which takes in the uh, acceleration in, in three axes from one sensor point uh, as an input and um, uh, gives as an output the uh, the amount of outliers uh, for, for a certain time window. And uh, uh, maybe Alexandros, you can comment more on the, uh, on the later uh, algorithms. Thank you very much, Moritz. Yes, uh, and uh, after uh, that, uh, after the detection, the prediction uh, uh, with this procedure that uh, Moritz uh, referred to, um, there is a, an implementation of uh, reinforcement learning algorithms in order to model the decision-making process and to uh, support decision-making of the operator uh, either before the maintenance uh, implementation or uh, during the uh, the maintenance implementation by providing, for example, uh, recommendations about maintenance actions, and then uh, with um, um, interactive reinforcement learning, uh, the human provides feedback in order to adapt uh, the decision-making model and to formulate the maintenance plan to be implemented during the uh, the maintenance procedures of the uh, of the JIG. Okay, thank you very much, Alexandros. Okay. We have another question. What was the total number of sensors placed on the case study? Um, we have done um, a field um, a field uh, trial uh, or two field trials uh, with uh, with our proto with earlier prototype nodes where we had. I think four uh, different uh, sense nodes on on one jig, um, and and one node obviously has many sensors. So uh, there's uh, X Y Z acceleration sensor, humidity, temperature, 
uh, and we had uh, also for uh, for one case and also on the demonstrator we had uh, also uh, applied uh, strain gauges to one of the nodes so that that means that you then uh, basically have an external sensor if you will where you apply strain gauges to your uh, to your uh, measurement um, location and uh, via wire just plug it into the mobile sense node which is strapped onto the uh, asset and uh, then you have uh, additional sensors uh, at this node which you can then uh, get the data from so uh, uh, for the complete number of uh, sensors which are in one node uh, i refer to the to the fact sheet in the presentation uh, but this is uh, this is a potentially large number because you also have external interfaces um, but we had four nodes on the on the on one of the deployments okay thank you very much jeron uh, we have uh... Another question, a uh, different rule of user using the uptime platform seems to be an important concept in your requirement for the uptime platform. Could you explain in few words more why this is so important to your application? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question. It's, uh, uh, it is basically uh, the case that we promised ourselves to reduce significantly our reporting overhead uh, by using the uptime platform. Basically meaning uh, from a top level uh, view that you say we have a platform which has, which knows everything there is to know about the assets which are connected to the platform. And uh, it continuously updates the, this knowledge. So it has uh, the, the real time knowledge about your complete asset fleet in the uptime platform. So uh, if you enable then every end user, every stakeholder um, to have a specific access to this data as exactly what he, he needs to know, what he is allowed to know and what he wants to know, um, then, you, uh, then you have no need for any additional reporting. You can just say, um, uh, if somebody asks you what's, what is the status, you just say, uh, look in the platform, click on your buttons and, uh, and see for yourself. Um, and uh, this, is, uh, this is, I think, uh, a feature which is uh, very effective to, uh, to get away, to, to, uh, to do away with uh, the, this uh, really time consuming and uh, cumbersome way of reporting, which is customary in, in, in projects with multiple, multiple stakeholders. So you, anybody can have on-demand access uh, according to predefined rules. That is the idea. And, and if you have that, you, you don't need uh, separate reporting. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. In the meantime, I don't know if the BIBA, the coordinator, want to provide some, uh, some feedback about the webinar. Uh, sorry. Um, no, I think uh, this... Um, since this was our third uh, webinar from, from the series, uh, for those of you who have followed uh, all three of them, um, it gets uh, quite a good overview of the, of the whole uptime project and how diverse the different application cases actually are. And um, I think that also brings out a little bit the challenge for the project to, uh, to create a platform and, uh, and a solution which is adaptable to, to these uh, different applications. So um, I think uh, this is one, one step or one part of, uh, of the whole uh, project. And as, as such, it shows quite good the, uh, uh, the task for, for this research project. Um, and I think also we have uh, have a few slides coming up uh, on the um, uh, on the forthcoming events and partner program. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Moritz. Okay. So uh, we don't uh, receive um, other question. The question we didn't answer today will be answered in the following day. So thank you very much for your question. Uh, now I leave the floor to Mr. Yves Kerraron, who will invite you to join to our part, community partner program. Yes, thank you. Um, 
thank you, Manuele. Thank, thank you, all the, the presenters. And uh, yes, uh, as Manuele said, uh, I will present you briefly the, the partner program we, we have put in place. Uh, the objective of this partner program is to um, I put my screen full. Can you see my screen? Yes. The objective of the partner program is to, to share knowledge and experience uh, on the uptime platform and also to get uh, feedback from potential end users, uh, so thus uh, to make grow uh, this community uh, around the uptime platform and also with the with the capabilities also of the platform. So we have um, uh, four types of partners in our partner program, uh, the information partner, the application partner, the pilot partner, and the technology partner. I will go now in maybe more, more detail on, on this. Uh, IP is so information partner, IP application partner, P, P pilot partner, and TP technology partner, yes. And so you can see the, the benefits to uh, to be part of this uh, partnership program. Uh, of course, this uh, the information partner has access uh, to, to all the news uh, through newsletters, videos, webinars, the websites, and uh, invita invitation to, to events. Uh, so to keep in touch uh, with the progress and uh, the capabilities of the platform. And the application partner has also access to technology free of charge and uh, also access to uh, events we can organize with experts on dedicated workshop. Uh, one more thing is also the access to demonstrator uh, online uh, to play you know, with the capabilities of the, of the platform and with the real data set. And uh, also, it can uh, application partner can influence the roadmap of the of the uptime platform, and uh, we can also um, give um, a free uh, half day uh, exchange with experts to to study in more detail the context of uh, the end users and the applicability of the uptime platform. Uh, the Pilot partner is uh, partners uh, motivated to 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 use uh, effectively the, uh, the the platform for a uh, given business case and in his uh, company, and so um, we uh, our experts are available to provide uh, technology to services, consulting services, and and so on to adapt uh, the platform to the. Uh, particular context of, uh, of a new new use case. Uh, finally, uh, technology partners are um, people uh, also involved in uh, predictive maintenance components development and uh, who can be interested by the whole platform or some components. Uh, to and so we are open to to also to discuss and to make a partnership at uh, at uh, with other technology partners or, or also to uh, to have a memorandum of understandings or contracts with them to uh, to to push the, the this uh, capabilities to to the market yes i i want maybe to to insist on that, um, uh, as we, you have shown before, uh, for, for the FFT use case, um, uh, the uptime platform integrates a, a set of components, and uh, for from acquisition to, to 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 proposal of decision for predictive maintenance. Um, it embeds really uh, years of. Uh, partnership between academics and, uh, and industry. Uh, the technological readiness of uh, each component is uh, almost all are, are eight. So uh, they can be uh, deployed on, uh, industrially on new uh, use cases. And um, so uh, this uh, technology is available free of charge. Uh, you know, you have 
a lot of uh, hype around the industry of the future, Industry 4.0. Uh, these uh, projects uh, have been for us a, a great opportunity to uh, to go to the reality of uh, of this um, uh, of this industry of the future. Um, it was mentioned before that uh, uptime platform is a data-driven uh, predictive maintenance approach. That, uh, that's true, but it's also a um, combination of uh, a data-driven approach and a model-based uh, uh, approach, uh, model-driven approach. For instance, we have also you see the, the component about the failure mode uh, um, and um, uh, uh, FMER uh, component, which um, combine, uh, which is also data driven in a, in a certain sense. So, I think uh, data driven and model driven approach have um, complementarities, and um, and especially for uh, to find out uh, cost effective solutions, and that was. Uh, also um, an important aspect um, for for the deployment of the platform um, we have uh, um, developed some uh, some tools also to 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 appreciate to assess uh, the uh, the return on investment which is not so easy i, I agree but uh, uh, we i think uh, the, the, the approach to combine different uh, uh, techniques uh, is uh, yes trying to to make it cost effective so come, come to to us and we have uh, uh, this mail to 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 join the community the, the website where you can find all the events and uh, <clears throat> there will be a special event on the second of february in the afternoon uh, about um, uh, it would be a, a virtual considering the, 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 the context of the sanitary crisis, but we will make it uh, as interactive as possible. Uh, we will try to be creative. We are more and more used now to use uh, some uh, tools for uh, virtual uh, events. It will be uh, really a great opportunity to, to, to exchange on the different aspects of uh, predictive maintenance strategies. And uh, I mean the technical aspect, but also the, the human knowledge aspects, organization aspects, and also the economical, uh, the economical aspect. And so you are more than welcome to, to this event. I hope you, you will see in and uh, also you will share some uh, insight on, uh, with you and uh, your context on, uh, on this kind of event. So that's all on my side. If you have any questions, I will be pleased to answer. Thank you very much, Yves, for your presentation. At the end of the webinar, all the participants will receive a survey. So we can really ask you to compile it and send the survey back to us. For any, uh, any further question, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us uh, on Uptime website, www.uptime-h2020.eu. <coughs> so, uh, thank you very much to all of you for taking part to the webinar, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Have a nice day. Thank you.